So that project was basically implemented for the oil industry to uh, kind of uh, analyze the production rate in a particular reservoir for the coming five years or ten years. So again, that application was also using Java. We used Java as a backend, and uh, on which we kind of implemented all the algorithms written by our petroleum engineers, uh, which which was again taking inputs of the reservoir like what's the soil. Uh, soil viscosity, soil density, pressure of the water injected into the reservoir. Based on all those inputs, that algorithm was uh, executed, and then we get the output as a graph, which will tell us that what will be the production rate in coming five years or ten years. Again, we used Java, uh, Spring Boot, Spring MVC. Uh, that application we build on Gradle framework, and on the database side we are using MySQL, and on the UI side uh, we we have used HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. So there, my main role was to work as a backend developer uh, to uh, uh, implement, to like to design the base architecture of the application. And that that particular software was mostly aligned on the solutions implemented for the uh, uh, ER, ERP-based applications, like energy resource planning and all. So kind of invoice implementation or uh, uh, chalan chalan creation, all those kinds of things. So again, there I have used Spring Boot. As a framework, Spring Data JPA, Hibernate, and on the UI side, we have been using Angular. So Angular, I was not involved much, but on the my main role was on the backend, and on the database side, uh, we have used uh, MySQL. So which intensively includes both development and the automation. So my role is including both like uh, use case implementation for different clients. Like one of the client PwC, I have implemented a Java application. That was responsible for uh, calling different APIs to get the asset and then register those asset into the uh, uh, product which Zalun uh, is providing. And on the automation side, again we are kind of automating the entire process of setting up the infra in the AWS cloud or whether it is in Azure, and also kind of uh, application deployment in the in the in the machines. And again, depending on the client's requirement, we spin up EMR or we kind of deploy all the microservices into the same EC2 machine. And those again, again on the uh, automation side, we have used uh, mostly uh, Docker, Kubernetes, uh, Python, self scripting, Ansible for configuration management on the EC2 machines and uh, patch deployment and all those kinds of things. And also uh, on the orchestration side, uh, we have used Jetix. And, and Git as a source code management. So this is my like uh, experience I have till now. Okay. How you good in Core Java? Yes. Okay. What is wrapper class in Java? Sorry. Wrapper class. Wrapper class. Yes. Wrapper classes are classes which are kind of uh, we have primitive data types. So if I want to convert that primitive data type to uh, an object, then I can make use of wrapper classes. Like we have boolean, boolean, integer, string. All these are wrapper classes in Java. Okay. Do you know design pattern? Design pattern. Yes. Yeah, design pattern. I have mostly worked on singleton design pattern in uh, in one of our uh, implementation. Okay. Can singleton I, design. Can you explain now what is singleton design pattern and where we are using that? Yeah, singleton design pattern is basically if I am, um, uh, for example, uh, the instance of that particular object will be created only once. That can be used across the application. Uh, let's say, for example. I want to create a session factory in Hibernate. I can make use of singleton classes to uh, get me that session factory, or, or connection creation, or the other other kind of uh, object which are needed only one single instance in entire application. Then we can uh, make use of singleton classes. What is abstract class? Abstract classes are classes to hide the implementation of a of a method. Okay, then what is the interface? Uh, interfaces are also does the same thing. It also uh, does the uh, it also hides the implementation. But the uh, main difference with the abstract classes is comes into the uh, case of inheritance because Java doesn't support multiple inheritance, and that's the reason why 
uh, we can make use of uh, interfaces to uh, like kind of implement multiple interfaces instead of abstract classes. Okay. Can you explain our uh, Java's uh, Spring pool? pool? Sorry? Java string pool. Can you explain what yeah. is a Java string pool and how the memories are managed in Java string? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So a string uh, pool comes into picture when we define a string as a literal. So whenever we define a string as a literal, that, that particular memory is allocated uh, inside the heap in a string constant pool. So kind of if I'm uh, if I'm uh, initializing another string with the same uh, content uh, as a literal, that will point to the uh, same address inside the string constant, which is in residing inside the heap. Okay. Then what is heap memory and stack memory? Heap memories are mostly uh, uses uh, mostly it, uh, allocates the memory uh, which which are created using new operator, and method area is a, a memory which which again holds the static variables or static methods inside uh, uh, defined inside the classes. So whatever we are defining as static in, in our classes, those goes in, inside the method area in the memory. And and those we are defining as a new operator using new keyword. So those are uh, allocated inside the heap. What is inheritance in Java? Uh, inheritance in Java is like uh, if I want to uh, kind of uh, mm, inherit a parent class or, or or kind of I want to use the same implementation for my parent class then I can make use of inheritance over there the kind of like all my parent implementation which are not private to parent uh, can be can be uh, moved to the child classes as well okay. how will you handle the exceptions uh, yeah we there are multiple way we can handle exception uh, one is to we can create custom exception to throw our own type of exception. Another way is to use try catch block, and another way is to use uh, throws keyword uh, directly in the method. Consider a program. Uh, in that time, handling exceptions so via try catch block, and also yeah. I am using finally block in that. Okay. Yes. Uh, in that finally block, I am using system dot exit. Okay. Yes. If I run the program, what will happen when it reaches finally finally block. block? Yeah. Yeah, that, that program will be uh, uh, terminated from the finally block itself because finally block will any which case it is going to be executed. Um, what will happen? What Consider will the happen? same scenario. Uh, instead of system dot exit, I am using some. Uh, throws exception inside the final block what will be what will happen throws exception means a throw keyword like using throw yes, keyword yes 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 in finally block i am using a throw keyword of some exceptions what will happen it will again terminate the program uh, with with uh, throwing the exception that uh, we are uh, 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 like writing there okay Because using throw keyword, uh, we can also directly use it in, in the uh, kind of uh, e else block and all. So fi in finally also it will do the same thing. It will terminate the program by throwing the exception from there. Okay, what's the difference between uh, fail fast and fail safe? Iteration. Fail, fail fast. I am aware of this, but. Um, right now um, I'm not sure like I no I, I'm not I don't remember this okay um, uh, how good in collections uh, are you good in the collections have you worked with collections yes, yes. yes uh, what is array list array list is a like, kind of extended version of array uh, which is again uh, uh, we have dynamic resizing inside it and which also uh, supports the random access of the uh, object inside it. Okay. What is the difference between array list and uh, set? Array list and 
set 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 yeah the, the uh, main difference i would say is the uh, type of memory allocation that it, it does so and and another one is array list is kind of in array list uh, we can store duplicate uh, objects but in set it doesn't support storing duplicate object and in array list we have random access uh, we can we can directly access the uh, element but in set we do not have random access and also uh, a set are mostly used for kind of uh, say insertion yeah uh, these are the okay. some okay. of the difficulties it was there is one more difference with the time complexity mm-hmm. for insertion okay what is the super class of array list super class of array list yes it's list yeah what's your answer super class of array list it implements list i don't remember can you store null values or uh, null keys and null values uh, in hash map yes we can so that will by default goes to the zero to index or okay okay you do you know hypernet right sorry uh, hypernet yes what is or orm in hypernet ORM yes so it's a object relational mapping with the database like it's it's map the uh, uh, the records inside the table with the object in the classes okay what are the interfaces uh, you are using in hypernet in hypernet like uh, interfaces interfaces in hypernet the uh, annotations are like interface with directly do not use the interfaces but mostly we creates the entity or creates the session factory objects and all like uh, okay uh, how hypernet works can you explain the architecture yeah hypernet uh, basically we creates a kind of if we, we are creating a entity let's say we have created a entity class so that entity class will be mapped to the uh, uh, inside a table uh, uh, with all the columns inside the table so whenever we we again like uh, we need to load the uh, when we create the connection connection uh, sorry the session factory then it creates a connection between the java application and the uh, database so whenever we do a get or load kind of thing internally hibernate screen executes the sql command that is uh, 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 triggered inside the uh, database so uh, we use a dialect for that that again like if we defining dialect for mysql it will automatically converts our uh, converts the query to the uh, to to sql or to oracle databases or kind of thing and it's like whenever we are kind of we need to start a transaction or like begin a transaction and then end the transaction and then between this transaction uh, it's it's uh, execute the uh, query to the database like taking the data to the inserting the record to the database or fetching the record from the database okay uh, while explaining you speak speak uh, speaking about session right uh, in hypernet session session factory Yes. Okay. What is uh, session? Is that a thread safe or not? A session is not a thread safe. Okay. Then what about the session factory? Session factory is also no, not a thread safe. So that's the reason, and it's a very uh, heavily weighted session factory. So it is recommended not to uh, create multiple objects of session factory. So what is lazy loading in hypernet then lazy loading is uh, like for example let's say i have uh, a relationship from one table to another table like one to many mapping uh, in, uh, in that case 
in lazy loading only the parent class will be loaded like the, the query will be executed only for the parent table for the child table the query will not be loaded whenever we on demand the query will be executed for the child table and then the record will be deleted okay what is uh, spring boot can you explain the architecture of spring boot why we are moving to spring boot yeah those things the main difference or uh, main reason for using spring boot is the main main feature that it provide us the us is the auto configuration part so like in the days of spring mvc we need to write the entire configuration whether uh, in the xml file or or in the in the class but in spring boot most, most of that uh, those jobs are done uh, internally by spring boot itself it's it's kind of it creates our uh, for for example for the database connection in days of in, in case of if spring mvc we need to create the entire uh, connection pool defining the connection pool size and all uh, loading but in case of uh, spring boot that we only need to provide the uh, database username and password the the url for it in the application dot property file so mainly mainly for the auto configuration side spring boot is mostly used and internally uh, when we are kind of bootstrapping the uh, spring boot application all the beans that we have defined in our configuration class are loaded uh, uh, by default as a singleton object that can be used across the across the uh, application okay if we want to disable uh, auto configuration what can we do um, i have not tried this actually with spring boot but we can override the configuration we can by default let's say for example a database connection is provided by my spring boot application itself by defining all the properties in the application dot property file but in the configuration class we can also make uh, use of we can return our created bean for that connection for to the database but disabling um, i have not done it okay what is the use of uh, at validation annotation sorry annotation valid what is the use of uh, yeah. at valid yeah at the rate of at, valid yeah. at the rate value valid valid Valid. Yes. So I don't remember. I have used this annotation mostly like on the entity classes, but I exactly do not remember right now. Okay. What is the use of at the rate value? At the rate value can be used. Let's say for example, I want to load some of the value from the uh, application dot property file. then there i can make use of at the rate value to load those uh, uh, value from directly from the uh, uh, property files okay okay if i want to change the default tomcat server in spring boot application to some other uh, server then what all the steps can i do what what i need to do no i have not done this Uh, are you using a default port or will you change a port number in your application? Ah, uh, yeah, we can do that. We can use server dot port in the application dot property file to change the port for that. Okay, okay. But mostly on the Tomcat side, server side, uh, we have used the default one only. Hmm. Are you good in microservice? Not, not actually hands on on the microservices. Mm. But on the deployment side, uh, we are kind of. Uh, I have some idea on how microservices architecture works. Are you any, using any repositories in your project for handling versions of your application? For handling? The versions of your application. Have you maintaining uh, the versioning process? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get your question. Could you please repeat that? Okay. If 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 you are giving a release today, okay, 
and later uh, by next month you are you want to give uh, another release of updated release of your uh, application this is usually happens yeah. right how will you maintaining yes. the versions so we are internally uh, uh, maintaining a artifact to store all those jar like in case of or or or, or uh, application patches for different releases just need to be kind of currently we are just creating different version or different patches for that and then storing it into the artifactory okay are you using any git and and in case of like deployment the application we are using uh, we are kind of storing all these patches to the uh, s3 buckets or kind of or, or for the docker images we are storing it to the uh, azure uh, res- container registries Uh, what are the another annotations other annotations do you know in uh, spring boot yes we have at the red be we have uh, at the red uh, rest controller we have at the red controller component services or at the red uh, repository okay have you worked with the web web services i have worked with web services but uh, mostly like creating the uh this one spring boot applications only okay how do you create uh, web services in spring boot how you create a connection with the uh, web services sorry how do you create a connection with the uh, web services in spring boot connection with the web services like another web service yes i have mostly use rest template for that like Uh, again like that was a spring boot application which was again not built on my microservice structure so we did not have any registry to uh, register multiple services so for for calling other microservices we have used a rest template classes to do that to to do a get call or to do a put, put call to the other microservices okay okay in rest in uh, while using a rest controller you will come across a request mapping right yes what is the difference between a request mapping and a get mapping at request mapping and at get mapping yes yeah. so at at the rate request mapping uh, doesn't like kind of mandates what kind of request that particular method will going to have but at the rate get mapping will mandate that only get request uh, from the browsers are, uh, are 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 going inside that method we can basically also define the uh, method type uh, in inside the inside the bracket where we are writing that the rate request mapping but the main main difference is uh, this how will you maintain a uh, session in our uh, hypernet how will you maintain a session how will you uh, get a session and how will you open a session how will you maintain that if you want to get a uh, current session what will you do so uh, first i will create a we need to create a session factory object which will again I'm sorry we need to create a configuration object so configuration will basically load the uh, xml file which will contain all the properties uh, that for for that particular database like the url the username password the dialect for it and the driver class so after that configuration uh, class is created we also need to write the uh, uh, kind of uh, need to scan the uh, entity classes then we need to create a session factory again this session factory we can use we can make use of singleton classes to return the session factory and once we get the uh, object for the session factory then we can uh, do uh, session factory object dot get session to open a session and then we can make use of that session to begin our transaction and creating an object and then uh, saving or kind of getting after that we need to end the transaction and close the session if i want to call one constructor from another constructor in a class uh, what can i use 
How can I call? What to? Need to call constructor from inside a class. From an another constructor. Maybe outside the class. Okay, I'll convey in this way. I have a class, yeah. and I have a subclass for that. Okay. I, if I want to call a super class uh, method, what can I do? Now How we can, can I use super super keyword in that case to call the parent class constructor. Okay. Then if I want to execute the current class, uh, if I am in a sub, uh, subclass, okay, consider I am in a subclass. If I want to execute the current class method instead of super class, what can I do? You need to. You want to execute current class method yes. instead of super class method. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you can override. You need. You are kind of overriding method, or or you directly want to. There is a different or different uh, method you have created. Uh, or it is yes, the same yes. method in uh, same both method. the child. It is having the yes. same method name, uh, which is in super class and uh, also in the uh, sub class. Okay. Uh, same method name it is having, but I want to execute the current class method. Okay. Which is yeah. So yeah. you can create the uh, uh, object for the child class to call that method, uh, which you have overridden in the child class. Then what is the use of uh, this method? There is uh, this keyword, right? There is one keyword called this. Yeah. Can, can I Definitely use that? The, yeah. Yeah. This keyword also we can use to execute the current class method. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is thread? Thread. Yeah. Yeah. Thread is thread is a concept of multi-threading where uh, it's a different path for execu execution of a program. How the deadlocks get created in a Java? Uh, deadlock, deadlock get created in Java in mostly cases like if one particular <coughs> thread is waiting for the lock which is dependent on the an another thread and that thread is also waiting for the lock which is being uh, taken by uh, thread 1. Let's say there is T1 thread and T2 thread and T1 thread is waiting to get the lock from T2 thread and T2 thread is waiting for waiting for uh, to get the lock for that object from T1 thread. In these kind of cases, deadlock situation occurs. Okay. If I want to resolve this deadlock situation, what can I do? Uh, there are two ways you can resolve this, either by using <coughs> synchronization or by using re and enumerated classes, uh, which by default creates a lock for a particular uh, area. How will you iterate an array list? Iterate an array list? Yes. We can use for loop or we can use for each loop. Okay. Or, or we can use iterator also. Okay. Yeah, I'm done with my interview. Yeah, yeah, sure, we'll intimate.